As the border situation continues to get worse, with seemingly no end in sight, even Democrat mayors of sanctuary cities are speaking out, which is actually kinda cute that they think that Biden would actually bail them out. Because being a sanctuary city is completely self-imposed for places like NYC. Uh, this city has always been a sanctuary city, and we've always managed those who wanted to come to uh, New York City. And later, even Adams admitted their sanctuary city status is destroying them. This issue will destroy New York City. Destroy New York City. But now, as the immigration issues have only increased, New York City's mayor has decided to punish the citizens. What we're going to have to do, and it's extremely painful, we're going to have to see how do we deliver services to our agencies mm -hmm. uh, without the resources we normally have. We want to minimize the impact to low-income New Yorkers, uh, our educational institutions, our public safety, and keeping our city street. But everything's on the table, Dan. Blaming the feds for his failures. The federal government has abandoned uh, this important issue. That's a national issue. So they're angry, and it's going to come out. I'm the mayor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But he should have known better as this is how Biden treats his black supporters. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Which is in stark contrast to how he sees other minorities. Unlike the African-American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community. So honestly, I don't know why mayors like Eric Adams are surprised when the party has basically built their platform based on sacrificing the person in the middle to help bolster up whoever is currently at the bottom, and more importantly, themselves. Just because you previously dominated the power rankings that were the oppression Olympics doesn't mean the Democrats won't suddenly decide to dethrone you. And whatever social services and safety nets that were set aside for you suddenly get sent to somebody new. And the same thing is happening in Chicago, as their mayor Brandon Johnson's platform was sanctuary and immigrant justice. But now, black Chicago residents realize what that means for their community. We are the only people in America that was enslaved in America. We are not immigrants. We are not migrants. We belong. Listen! Move us out and then come in to compete with jobs, goods, and contracts and services. I'm not for the sanctuary city. And the reason why I'm not for the sanctuary city is because people have waited years to come in here legally, not just transported on these buses, dropped off in our neighborhoods. My black communities have been earmarked for having funds, never seen it. We're still waiting on those funds to come into those communities. Brandon Johnson, many people stood behind you. They feel let down. If you have the nerve to open an office of new Americans, then what is your plan for the original Americans? So somehow Chicago's mayor wants to blame the Texas governor for the issues that he created. And then they come to the city of Chicago where we have homelessness, we have mental health clinics that have been shut down and closed, you have people who are seeking employment. The, the governor of Texas needs to take a look in the mirror of the chaos that he is causing for this country. And it's not like Texas isn't trying to stop this issue. Their Republican governor is granting local law enforcement expanded powers to counteract the crisis. And even Democrat governors are activating their National Guard in attempts to secure the state. So how easy would it be to just admit their mistakes that being a sanctuary city is only easy if you barely have to provide any actual sanctuary? But if your party's leader suddenly says, surge the border while suing the southern states to break down their barriers, the one million new homeless migrants that arrive every six months are going to need somewhere to go, and advertising that you are the place that provides free sanctuary is actually false advertising as it's impossible to provide at that size population, which exposes them for not doing this because they're so compassionate, they're doing it for nothing more than political points. Because Chicago's Brandon Johnson slams Texas buses as a kid tragically passed passed away in his temporary shelter. But it actually looks like the Biden administration sees this as a acceptable loss. Over the weekend in Chicago, a five-year-old boy who was living in a migrant shelter died. What would the White House say to his family? That's devastating. A child dying, anyone uh, dying, uh, is devastating. Devastating. This is why we have taken this very seriously from day one when it comes to dealing with a broken immigration system. Uh, question on the new uh, uh, immigration law in Texas. 
Uh, why have any, why have so many thoughts on that law? It is very much in line with what Republicans, uh, many Republicans uh, like to do or tend to do, which is demon, de, de, demonize uh, immigrants and also uh, dehumanize immigrants. So no new laws to prevent this. No new white suits and photo ops to shame the leadership that are completely to blame. No, all the Democrats that aren't affected will still think everything is fine. Bad question that you get from the left if he does agree to these changes. He's gonna, there's gonna be a lot. We have to put together a coalition that is the same coalition we delivered in 2020. Because the Republicans have never gotten immigration right. That's just the fact of it. Um, there's not very much that the Republicans get right in general. And so the Democrats in the Senate and others who are considering supporting <laughs> this proposal. If you do so, you will be surrendering to right-wing racism so using spooky words that villainize the other side to their voters seems to be the only thing that they can provide because there's a very finite amount of supplies in these cities and when they start having to make sacrifices, it's never going to be themselves or the people seeking sanctuary. It's going to be you and more importantly, the things that you value. As Anna Ghiaritelli breaks down the nearly 6 million migrants Biden had brought in. It reminds me of when Trump criticized the migrants in Minnesota over seven years ago, where USA Today counteracted Trump's claims, saying no, it wasn't 70,000 Somalians in Minnesota, it was just 6,300, which was the highest number of any state. But fast forward to today, where now Minnesota has changed their state flag. Now honestly, I couldn't care less, I never even knew it used to look like this. So rebranding the state to this seemed pretty insignificant until you realize it looked oddly similar to Somalia's flag, which they actually had to abruptly change as their first redesign definitely looked like a flag straight ripped from Somalia. So it's simply amazing how resettling 6,000 people can suddenly change the entire identity of a state in just about eight years. And again, I'm not necessarily saying anything good or bad about this, as I don't personally know many Somalians, but those that I do, they were just regular guys trying to live the American dream, actually trying to shed their Somalian accents. The difference being, none of them found it important to change their local government to be more like the place that they fled. And seeing how Minnesota somehow is rebranding their state to be more like a country that's national religion has very incompatible values to the existing deep blue liberal voters, I just can't help but think what's happening in every decade-long Democrat stronghold like Chicago or New York City is actually happening everywhere and the citizens are just barely starting to catch on. So if you appreciate my concise, lighthearted commentary on the tragic status that is today's reality, hopefully I've earned your subscription, then go check out the video on how shopkeepers that look like Indiana Jones don't have time for unemployed behavior.